Amy Tava Geary is the head of Group and Business Excellence at Emirates National Oil Company. He is responsible for developing and managing the quality and business excellence function for the group. He also handles the management systems implementation and compliance, process improvements, including of Lean and Six Sigma methodologies and innovation, business and operational excellence at the group level. At Emirates National Oil Company, he's a key member of management for establishing, monitoring, and reviewing st strategy and performance. Amitabha, take it away. Thank you, Laura, for the introduction. Uh, today's presentation is on uh, challenges of conducting integrated uh, audits. And in doing so, I would uh, like to take you to uh, few key areas, that is integrated management systems, uh, advantages of uh, integrated management systems, management system audits, their key challenges, and uh, some takeaway points. Uh, to begin with, let me bring in context uh, Emirates National Oil Company, the organization for whom I work. Uh, Emirates National Oil Company, ENOC, was established in the year 1993 is a wholly owned Dubai government entity and a leading integrated global oil and gas entity operating across the energy sector value chain. Uh, Enoch Group comprises of more than 30 related businesses and subsidiaries involved in exploration, production, drilling for oil, supply, trading and processing of oil, which includes refining of petroleum products and crude, storage and terminaling, retailing of fuel products, and also manufacturing and production of oil-related products such as lubricants and freezes. Uh, Enoch services customers across 60 markets globally and employs a workforce of, of over 12,000 people. At uh, Enoch, uh, in context with today's presentation, we have implemented multiple international standards, which are ISO 9001 for quality management system, ISO 14001 for environment management system, OSHA's 18001 occupational health and safety management system, and more recently, ISO 45001. ISO 50001 for energy management system, ISO 27001 that's for information security management, and uh, ISO 20000 which is for IT service management. This slide typically uh, shows uh, how integration of uh, management systems would look like. Uh, organizations generally follow two approaches to uh, integration. One is design and implement a system incorporating all the required standards at one go, or integrate one standard at a time, starting generally with the most popular and primary standard, which is the ISO 9001. As you can see from this uh, slide, when you integrate, there are a lot of common elements which overlap, such as uh, resource management, management of risks and opportunities, management reviews, and this bring about synergies when implementing multiple international standards. Typically, organizations tend to focus on management systems individually, often in silos, which sometimes even result in conflict. Accordingly, a quality team only focuses in the QMS, while an EHS manager would look only to environment, health and safety issues, and the energy responsible manager would focus only on energy management system. In an integrated management system, all of the organization's systems and processes are structured into one complete framework enabling the organization to work as a single unit with unified objectives. At Enoch, we've done the same, combining multiple management systems into one single unit, and the system that's implemented enables covering 
each the requirement of the constituent standards. The approach that uh, we took at ENOC was to begin initially with uh, the ISO 9001 standard in the early 1990s. Subsequently, the ISO 14001 and much later the OSHAS 18000 standards were added as a basis to establish our integrated system. This approach enabled robust implementation of the specific requirements of each standard, leading to a creation of a standard template for implementation of IMS, which could then later be rolled out uh, across the entire organization, uh, enabling a very, very systematic approach to implementation of the IMS. Subsequently, uh, more recently, that is uh, around seven, eight years ago, with the advent of the ISO 50001 standard on energy management system, the organizational focus on sustainability and sustainable development, 50001 was also introduced as the fourth standard of the IMS. An IMS combines uh, all the related components of the organization for easier management and easier operations. This facilitates a standardized approach to processes and unified attention to system requirements, such as managing objectives and targets, risks and opportunities, and critically the management reviews. Thus at uh, ENOC, when we set objectives and targets, or we evaluate business risks and opportunities, and their subsequent reviews, all aspects concerning quality, environment, health and safety and energy are taken into consideration. This not only brings about greater synergy in management of processes and operations, but also enables elimination of repetitions from the individual standards perspective, rendering the process more effective and more efficient. Where an IMS has been effectively implemented into the organization's business strategy and direction, it enables top management to ensure effective leadership and commitment while reducing the amount of duplication of activities and therefore time spent on reviewing and upgrading the same. The Annex SL framework provided by ISO results in a standardized and consistent approach to implementation ongoing maintenance and continual improvement of the management system. This allows cost savings through the efficient use of resources at all levels and functions throughout the organization. And IMS further enables organizations to fully understand their business context and stakeholder obligations with requirements to specific sectors highlighting the risks and opportunities. Some of the key takeaways that were realized by implementing IMS at ENOC were uniformity of processes and standardization of approach, improved efficiencies and removal of redundancies of the respective constituent management systems, synergies in assessing and managing risks and opportunities, including actions to address these, managing resources required, including competence of people, Integration of system elements, such as internal audits and management reviews, resulting in a common, unified, efficient approach. Coming back uh, to our uh, core discussion for today, which is audits. Now, if you look at the definition of audit, it is the principles of auditing ensure that an audit is an effective and reliable tool in support of management policies and controls by providing information on which an organization can act in order to improve its performance. This is as given in ISO 19011. So if you look at the audit schematic, typically the audit starts with uh, opening discussion with the personnel responsible for the area or the activity. 
thereafter a physical walkthrough, a physical review, a physical verification, which is walk the talk of the actual activities or processes being operated and managed by the department. Subsequently, review of uh, documents, review of records to ensure that uh, the requirements are being implemented as uh, described by the audit department. Result in uh, gathering of uh, evidences and uh, evaluation of findings based on review of the activities and the documents and finally preparation of the report. This typically is the audit cycle. At ENOC, some of the key challenges that uh, we faced while conducting audits uh, typically are ENOC being a very large, multi-site and diversified organization. Complexity of audit scope was or continues to be a key problem or a key issue. Uh, audit planning and scheduling, auditor competence, conducting audits, audit reporting, corrective action management. Complexity of audit scope, uh, this is uh, always a challenge because as I explained in my opening slides that uh, ENOC is an uh, integrated and diversified organization operating in the upstream, which is oil uh, production, oil drilling, oil exploration, uh, in the midstream, which is the production and processing of uh, petroleum, the refinery uh, complexes, then manufacturing of uh, lubricants and grease, and in the downstream sector, which is uh, retailing uh, of fuel through a network and distribution of uh, fuel products, apart from the corporate uh, departments like sales, marketing, procurement, uh, human resources, strategy, IT, etc. So managing such a diverse scope to audit uh, is uh, is definitely a big challenge, and uh, managing this effectively is the key to doing proper and efficient audits for the organization. Another idea that we need to focus on while conducting audits uh, is, of course, the uh, auditor competency. Selection of auditors, uh, we need to take into consideration that uh, auditors are individually qualified to multiple IS standards, which are the constituent standards that is QMS, QMS, energy and health and safety standards. Uh, also, we need to keep in mind uh, the knowledge and awareness uh, of the various activities being audited. So uh, we have areas like the refinery complex, we have the lead manufacturing plants for the quality fuel handling terminal operations. And uh, auditors' individual knowledge and awareness about these processes will be a big advantage. Auditor basic qualification and background, this is also uh, important because while recruiting auditors for audit, we need to ensure that auditors who are predominantly from the corporate or head offices managing processes like uh, procurement or HR or IT may not have very good uh, knowledge and awareness about uh, field operations or plant operations. So we need to ensure that these auditors focus more on the corporate uh, areas and the other auditors from the businesses focus on the operations. Previous audit uh, experience and uh, ability to identify potential findings, another important uh, point. By reviewing the auditors' uh, reports from previous audits, we are able to make out uh, if the auditor has been very effective in carrying out the previous uh, audits. From the uh, judging from the type of reports they produce, from the type of audit findings uh, they raise, which gives insight into the uh, amount of uh, application of individual expertise and knowledge that the auditor uh, does while performing the audits. 
commitment and interest to conduct audits is also another important uh, issue. But this is uh, generally evident again from uh, the uh, auditee feedback that we get, which for every audit that we conduct, we do take feedback from the audit from the auditee department, and also from the reviews of the audit reports that are prepared. So it becomes very clear what the the auditor was um, underprepared, whether he had not planned uh, adequately to conduct the audit, whether he had not adequately reviewed the system documentation before going for the audit. All these would indicate uh, perhaps a lack of interest or commitment to carry out the audit. And in that case, we would um, coach the auditor before uh, subsequent future audits or probably even remove the individual from uh, conducting audits. Audit planning, as uh, I was explaining in my previous slide, selection of auditors are based on the availability of competent auditors and the availability, and ability to assess key processes, which includes uh, knowledge and awareness about uh, the areas being uh, audited, such as the refining, uh, the manufacturing plants or even the distribution network. Audit planning also takes into consideration the importance of processes from the aspect of quality, environment, health, uh, safety, etc. Changes affecting the organization and the results of uh, previous audit. This is particularly more important from the individual's uh, auditor's preparation perspective. As a part of preparation for the audit, uh, the auditor definitely needs to look at what is happening in the department or area that is being audited. And if there are indications that the department has brought in new procedures, new processes, uh, new business methodology, or even new technology, then changes that uh, result from such new initiatives need to be uh, reviewed. Also, results of previous audit would um, indicate that there are potential problems or areas that need to be focused in subsequent uh, audits. Accordingly, the auditor needs to prepare and ensure that these uh, areas are followed up during the audit. Ensuring that all key areas and processes are included and audited, this again becomes particularly important where there are multi-site locations business to business environment or a business to customer environment. Defining audit criteria for each area and activity, keeping in perspective the different institution standards, and tracking the progress of audits. Again, this becomes important uh, when uh, multiple audits happen, like uh, in ENOC, when we, when we commence uh, internal audits, we normally have a team of 60 to 70 auditors uh, conducting audits across the organization, multiple uh, businesses, multiple locations, which could go up to 250 to 300 uh, audit uh, sites being audited uh, simultaneously. Planning and scheduling audits, uh, considering the importance of processes, changes affecting the organization and the results of previous audits. Uh, this can be also a challenge, uh, especially when there are multiple sites involved and uh, each particular site may have different kinds of findings coming out of the previous audit, which need to be tracked, reviewed, and followed up for effective action in subsequent audits. Ensuring availability of auditor and auditee management uh, for the uh, audit to be conducted. Uh, this is also a challenge because uh, obviously being an operating organization, uh, auditors have their individual commitments as do the business and the audit management. So ensuring that uh, both are able to come together for the audit uh, uh, often takes uh, deft management of schedules. Uh, which comes to the next point of frequent or last minute changes in availability due to business and other needs which may at times be unavoidable. Non availability of competent auditors for auditing some departments and sites. Uh, it's a challenge at times. 
sites or departments or with surgery or with fusions in the kitchen again this largely happens basically with our uh, retail uh, sites uh, or the distribution network because uh, they are located in various different places similar in nature and we often auditors are assigned two to three sites uh, during each uh, audit visit to be completed and there are possibilities that you know one or more site may get left out due to schedule problems or miscommunications uh, as this uh, slide shows uh, typically uh, organizations work uh, in uh, three different uh, ways they are either siloed with very little uh, synergy between respective areas uh, the second approach is uh, being collaborative and uh, of course the third approach goes way beyond collaboration where there is integration of people and processes to give a more efficient uh, approach assessing the extent and maturity of uh, integration is important uh, as uh, it would be indicated siloed systems have comparatively lagging indicators whereas uh, integrated systems produce more disciplined and predictive processes a robust ims enables organizations to identify potential improvements across all its parameters by providing a holistic view of the entire business which includes quality environment health safety energy etc and uh, is at a higher advantage than that would be uh, achieved under individual siloed systems while uh, conducting audits uh, time constraints is perhaps uh, one of the foremost challenges uh, as there are multiple sites to be covered multiple standard requirements to be reviewed uh, in each of the areas audit checklists guidelines uh, this is something which the auditor needs to uh, prepare well in advance uh, often for large organizations auditors may have limited access to documents uh, related to the departments being audited and uh, unless the auditor prepares well in advance ensures that he or she has access to the required documents the procedures the policies the work instructions etc before going for the audit and uh, making sure that the checklist is prepared the notations are uh, made into a ready reckoner it will be difficult to conduct uh, efficient audit within the limited time provided technical expertise required for some of the areas which i've previously mentioned is also uh, important such as uh, manufacturing areas like the refinery complex or terminal operations or the lubricant manufacturing plant Miscommunication uh, between auditor and auditee regarding dates, audit plan, etc., does happen once in a while, and this needs to be effectively managed. Knowledge and awareness about the department or area being audited is something which was important, as I've mentioned in uh, my previous slide, and that's normally taken care of while assigning auditors the respective uh, area to be audited, depending upon their uh, core knowledge or a core area of competence. Assessing management of change in a department of area with respect to new products, services, processes in reference to workplace location and surroundings, working conditions, equipment and workforce. This is a very important point uh, to be noted because um, in a dynamic business scenario, uh, businesses, manufacturing locations often bring in new processes, new procedures, new methodology, new technology, new techniques. And all these require not only looking at the risks, the changeover from previous pro uh, methodologies to the new methodologies, the competence of people required to manage the uh, change so as an auditor it is important to assess to judge how uh, departments how businesses are coping with the new changed uh, requirements
knowledge and awareness about audited departments or sites, ability to utilize personal knowledge, information, and experience in the audit as a value adding exercise. Again, this is a very, very important uh, point. The auditee and the auditee department are not looking at uh, basic uh, findings like a document not being available or a paper not being signed. They are expecting the auditors to add value to the process by going uh, deep inside, doing a deep dive and understanding how efficiently the business is being managed or if there are gaps that need to be bridged or improvements that can be brought on board. Following up on key findings from previous visits is something which uh, every auditor should mandatorily perform uh, because that's the way we ensure correction and corrective actions are managed. Audit trails and linkages to management reviews, customer complaints, uh, or key initiatives is another area critically important for auditors to focus on. Uh, enables to ensure that there is synergy between operations and the workflow is seamlessly uh, managed, especially with respect to uh, audit uh, trails. Reporting. Quality of audit findings, uh, ensuring adequate emphasis on each of the constituent standards that is uh, QMS, EMS, uh, energy, or OSHAs, et cetera. Quality of audit report, which means clear audit findings, which are relevant, add value to the processes being audited, and most importantly, uh, enable communication of the finding with great clarity so that corrective actions can be taken on board. This is, of course, dependent on the uh, reporting structure, the way audits are graded, and uh, timely submission of audit reports is also very important because if audit reports are unduly delayed, uh, not only they do limited justice to the audit exercise, but they also fail the business in uh, highlighting or indicating potential problems and issues, uh, which uh, if not managed within time could lead to bigger risks for the organization. Resolving audit findings without appropriate analysis linking to quality, environment, health, and safety aspects is uh, one of the important issues which need to be taken care of with respect to managing corrective actions. Ensuring effectiveness of corrective actions taken, including root cause analysis and timely action to control, correct, and deal with com consequences is an important element of audit management. and. This is what auditors need to also review when they go for subsequent audits to ensure that businesses are implementing the corrective action in a timely manner, but also appropriately by understanding the root cause of the issues where the problems came in the first place. Corrective actions and corrections carried out without identifying root cause or reason for non fulfillment of requirement without risk analysis, without looking at management of change would be detrimental and hence a lot of focus needs to be given to these areas. Finally, these are uh, some of the key takeaways uh, that I would like to strongly recommend uh, in terms of managing uh, integrated uh, audits or conducting integrated audits. Firstly, how to assess the extent to which organization's management system has been integrated. If you remember, I spoke about a siloed approach, a collaborative approach, and the integrated approach. And experienced auditors need to understand the extent to which integration has happened so that uh, the organization benefits from an efficient process which brings about synergy in all its activities. Secondly, how to fulfill all the technical attributes for assessing an integrated management system audit. There are two parts to this. One is uh, with respect to the constituent management systems, whether it's QMS, EMS, OSHAs, etc., but also the technical aspects or the technical requirements of the process being audited. Here, the knowledge 
and awareness uh, of auditor would also be very, very uh, important. And uh, auditors need to ensure they, they update themselves uh, reasonably well before visiting critical areas to carry out audit. How to create uh, added value for the auditor? I cannot stress more on this because this is what the audit department is actually expecting from the uh, auditor to add value by identifying if there are gaps or potential opportunities to improve from the audit process. How to achieve efficiency uh, in auditing and how to add value through knowledge and depth of experience. These are two areas that the auditor should always uh, remember. Time is precious. The auditee department cannot afford to give unlimited time to the auditor and the auditor also needs to complete the audit within a reasonable frame of time. So he has to be very efficient in the way he conducts the audit. And also he needs to add value by virtue of his or her knowledge and experience by identifying opportunities for improvement for the department. So that brings us to the end of today's presentation. Thank you very much. Thanks, Amitabha. This ends today's presentation. Thanks for listening.